Welcome to the first Solar175 How to Play video, designed to teach you everything you need to play the first game in the Solar175 campaign. This video series aims to get you playing the campaign as fast as possible. Solar175 is a legacy game, so this video series will take you through the first four games of the campaign, teaching you all the changes along the way, and this will put you in a position to be able to deal with all future changes. If you have any questions, then please feel free to ask them in the comments section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Also, I'll be using the deluxe edition for this video, so some of the components in your version may look slightly different if you have a different version. In Solar175, you play as CEO of a new spacefaring corporation, battling it out in the race to exploit an ever-changing and expanding solar system. So first, let's set up for each player. Each player chooses a corporation and takes the items that correspond with that corporation colour. The player board, worker bag and the four permanent starting workers. Place these workers into your bag. Take your city leave card and place it face up near your player board. Then take your starting ship mini and corresponding ship card. Place the ship card next to your player board with the pilot icon face up. Only the starting ships are used in the first few games, one per player. The remaining ship minis are not used until they are unlocked by game events. Each player takes 17 outposts of their colour. Place four of these onto the spaces in the available workers section of your player board, noted by this symbol. Give the first player token to the player who most recently earned some money, or randomly. Take two credit tokens and place one into the one credit space. This indicates the number of credits you currently possess. And then keep the other by the side of your board. Then take four bases in your colour and place them into the relevant spaces on your player board. Also, as this is your first game, make sure to give each player a reference card. Next up, let's set up the solar system. These cards make up the locations in the solar system where the game will take place. Set these out in their indicated pattern, which is also shown in the rulebook. The solar system is set out in separate zones. In your first game, you will only operate in zones 1 and 2, but as you play the campaign, the number of zones will expand. Several of the Solar System location cards have two sides, A and B. Initially, you'll start with all cards on their A side. However, as the game is played, red stickers will be added to the A side of cards. When this happens, the card will be flipped to the B side for the remainder of the campaign. For all location cards that have a mining symbol, put a mining token onto them. If playing with four or five players, place two tokens onto each of these cards. When you've set up the solar system, each player needs to place their starting ship mini onto the Earth card. Finally, place the megastructure location token onto Earth. This is the location of the megastructure project being built in this first game. Now, to assemble the general supply. Take the megastructure funding tokens and military tokens and place them near the board. And this forms the general supply. Next up, let's set up the rows. Each of these rows of cards will be interacted with by taking different actions during the game. These rows are split into categories, outpost, employment, trade and political. Let's start with the outpost row. Take the three outpost cards and place them onto the table. These cards are double-sided, so choose randomly which side of each card to have face up at the start of each game. Next, take the Niven Outpost Corporation card and place it in reach of all players. Finally, place the 13 remaining outpost tokens of your colour onto this card. Now onto the employment row. This row of cards indicates the workers you can hire during the game. Place each of the hire cards to the right of the solar system cards with the A side face up and populate them with the relevant workers. Populate the Urushi Employment Center card with all of the general worker tokens. 
the Nakamura Flight Academy card with all the pilot worker tokens, the Trepanvitz Engineering Company card with all the engineer worker tokens, the Atkins and Van Schoyuk card with all the lobbyist worker tokens, and lastly, the Shepard AI Systems card with all the algorithm worker tokens. The number of algorithms you place on the card is dependent on the player count you are using, which is listed on the card itself. The remaining tokens go back into the box. Let's now set up the trade row. This row of cards indicates the actions you can take when you perform the trade action. These cards can all be spotted by the Interplanetary Trade Center logo on the bottom right hand corner. Place the following cards face up into this trade row. The Hensler, Rio Astro Corp and Bank of Urushi cards. Place two bases of each player's colour onto the Hensler trade card. Then place the remaining mining resource tokens onto the Rio Astro Corp trade card. Now onto the setup for the political row. This row indicates the political parties you can help to achieve election victory in order to change how the game is scored. Place the Workers' Union Party, United Federalists and Brave New Dawn cards face up below the Solar System cards. Next, assemble and put out the ballot box. For guidance on how to assemble this box, check the rulebook. Then, place the voting tokens and white wall pen onto the table near the ballot box. Now, as this is your first game, place the election token onto the United Federalists card, making sure that the UFSS logo is face up. In future games, this token will start on the party that won the election in the previous game. The rules and setup of Solar 175 will change as the campaign progresses. Throughout the rulebook, you will see these boxes that indicate a rule change is possible to be unlocked during the campaign. As this is your first game, these can be ignored. The aim of each game of Solar 175 is to gain the highest amount of influence in the solar system by earning influence points. The game itself is played in a series of rounds split into three phases, which repeat continuously until an end game trigger is activated. So let's take a look at each phase. The first phase is the draw phase. In this phase, players simultaneously draw workers from their worker bag equal to their current available worker allowance. For your first turn, this will be four workers. Your available worker allowance is indicated by the highest number on your player board track, not covered by outposts. The workers go into this area on your player board after they have been drawn. If at any stage your bag is empty and you cannot draw your full worker allowance, then you refill your bag with the workers from your city leave card and continue to draw until you have filled your available worker track or until you've run out of workers. The second phase is the assign workers phase. Simultaneously, all players take their available workers from their player board track and place them onto available action spaces on their player board or ship card. Any workers not placed onto actions can remain in your available workers spaces, or you can move them straight to your city leave card. You do not need to place all the required workers onto an action, and you can therefore partially fill actions to be completed in future rounds. So why might you place a worker straight onto your city leave card instead of placing it onto an action? Well, when you do this, you immediately build an outpost, meaning that you take an outpost token of your colour from the Niven Outpost Corporation card and place it near your player board. You may only build a maximum of two outposts per round using this method. When placing workers, only one worker can go into each available space. Most workers may only be placed onto spaces that correspond to their colour and icon. The exception to this is the algorithm workers, which are wild and can be placed onto any available space. When a whole action is filled with workers, you may then perform that action in the next phase, the action phase. But you must wait for all players to complete this assign workers phase before moving on to the third phase. The third and final phase is the action phase. This is the phase where the majority of the game occurs. Starting with the player with the first player token and moving clockwise, you each take one action per turn by removing all the workers from fully completed action spaces and placing those workers onto your city leave card. You may then take the action that these workers completed. 
These actions will allow you to do useful things such as hire new workers and interact with the different corporations in the game. So, there are four categories of actions that can be performed on your turn. General actions. These are the move and outpost actions, which help you move around the solar system and build presence. The move action does not take place on your player board. Instead, you take this action by removing a pilot from your ship card. Then, you may move your ship mini a number of spaces equal to the amount indicated on its corresponding ship card. For the starting ships in your first game, this is up to three spaces. Ships can move orthogonally or diagonally, but they cannot move across spaces with this red symbol on it. Just remember though, if a location already has two or more ships on it, then you cannot move to that location, but you can still move through it. Some locations give you a benefit for arriving on them. If you move to a location with a mining resource token on it, you may take a mining resource token. Now on to the second general action, the outpost action. You'll need to remove a general worker and an engineer from this area of your player board to take the outpost action. This action allows you to manipulate your outposts and build your presence in the different zones of the solar system using the outpost cards. So why might you want to take the outpost action? Well, increasing your presence in different zones is one of the most important paths to victory in games of Solar 175. Each zone can give influence points to the player or players who have the most presence in it at the end of the game. Outposts are worth one presence each in the zone they are placed, and your ship is worth two presents in the zone it ends the game in, as indicated on your ship card. Another element, the bases you build, can also increase your presence in each zone, as we'll discover later. The different zones of the solar system are indicated by these coloured lines surrounding different areas. In your first game, only two zones will be in play. There are three different outpost cards available. So when taking the outpost action, you choose one of these three cards and perform the action it displays. Then you flip your chosen card to the other side. The three outpost cards are Build Card. Building outposts means taking outposts of your colour from the Niven Outpost Corp card and placing them in your player area ready to be assigned. Building outposts can also help you gain credits. This side of the card allows you to build one outpost and gain two credits. And this side of the card allows you to build two outposts and gain one credit. Credits are measured by this track on your player board. When you gain credits, you simply move your credit token up this track. If you reach any multiples of 10, add a second token to the relevant square. For example, this player has two credits. This player has 12 credits, and this player has 22 credits. The Assign card. Assigning outposts means sending outposts you've built to specific locations in the solar system, so that your presence will be increased in that zone. Outposts need to be built before they can be assigned. This side of the card allows you to assign up to two of your outposts from your player area to any locations within the same zone. And this side of the card allows you to assign up to two of your outposts from your player area to any locations within two different zones. The move card. Moving outposts means taking outposts that have already been assigned to a zone of the solar system and moving them to another zone. These can be your own or your opponent's outposts. This side of the card allows you to move up to two outposts. And this side of the card allows you to perform two different actions. The first is to move a worker from one hub to another hub. Hubs are spread throughout the solar system and the amount of workers placed on these hubs will make a huge difference to the end game scoring. There'll be much more information on these hubs a little later as they are a very important part of the game. And the second action on this side of the card allows you to draw a new worker from your bag and immediately assign them to an action space on your player board or ship card. This means that they can be used to complete jobs this round. For example, if you drew a pilot, you could maybe immediately assign it to your ship card and then move that ship. Now let's take a look at another category of actions, the trade actions. To take this action, you remove a pilot and a lobbyist from the trade action on your player board. The trade action allows you to visit one card in the trade row and perform the corresponding action. So let's take a look. The Rio Astro Corp card. 
Riastro specialise in acquiring and selling resources gained from off-earth mining. If you take this action, you may either buy or sell mining resource tokens. This will cost you three credits when buying a token, or gain you three credits when selling one. If you sell a mining resource token, it goes onto the Rio Astro card and is available to be bought in the future. If there are no mining resource tokens available on the Rio Astro card, then you cannot buy from there, but you may still sell to the corporation. Then there's the Bank of Urushi card. By taking this trade action, you collect one credit, or you pay one credit to draw another worker from your bag in the same way as we discussed before. And remember, you can use this worker immediately this round. Next is the Hensler card. Taking this trade action allows you to build a base in a location where you currently have a ship or to buy a new base. To build a base, you must first check that you have a ship in a location which allows you to build a base, as this is not always possible. Locations where you can build a base have prices in the bottom right corner of the location card, which indicate the cost to build there. Take Mars for example. One credit and one mining resource token are needed to build a base. You can't build a base in a location where you have already built a base in this game. And to build a base, you must also have a base available to build. Bases are stored in the right hand side of your player board. Once you've paid the cost of the base, remember to place the mining resource token you pay onto the Rio Astro trade card. You then take the base from your player board and place it onto the relevant location card. Building bases has three benefits. One is immediate and two happen at the end of the game. The immediate benefit is that you will uncover a bonus underneath the base you built. And this is one of four possible bonuses. These bonuses are indicated by the symbols in the centre of the revealed spaces on your player board. For example, building this space allows you to immediately take a move action. And this immediately gives you two credits. At the end of games, the bases themselves are worth influence points. How much will be explained when we discuss end game scoring. And the second end game benefit of bases is that they have an impact when calculating your presence in a specific zone. A base is worth two presents each in the zone it's in. The second action you could take by using the Hensler trade action is to buy a new base. To do this, pay two credits and take one of the two bases of your colour from this card. Place this base onto an empty base space on your player board. You must have already built a base and therefore have an empty space on your player board in order to take this action. The third category of action is the worker removal actions. Worker removal actions permanently remove a worker from your pool to gain you powerful benefits. They are taken by placing individual workers onto these three spaces near the right hand side of your player board. Worker removal actions cannot be taken by your four permanent workers which you start with in each game. When workers are removed, they are placed onto the hub cards in the solar system. The value of the workers conscripted to a hub at the end of the game will impact how the path to victory associated with that hub is scored, so choose carefully where to place your removed workers. The worker value of a hub is the value of the workers that have been sent to it by the end of the game. Workers have a worker value of one each, except for algorithms, which are worth two each. For example, the worker value of this hub is 7. Megastructure funding tokens are worth influence points equal to the worker value of the workers on this card at the end of the game. For example, if the worker value on this card is 5 at the end of the game, then the megastructure funding tokens you possess will be worth 5 influence points each. Bases are worth influence points equal to the worker value of the workers on this card at the end of the game plus points equal to their zone number. So if the worker value on this card is five at the end of the game, this base in zone two will be worth five plus two, so seven influence points. Military tokens are worth influence points equal to half the worker value of the workers on this card at the end of the game, rounded down. For example, if the worker value on this card is five, then the military tokens are worth two influence points each. 
The workers on the zone hubs indicate how many influence points the player with the most presence in that zone will earn at the end of the game. The influence points awarded to players for having the most presence in each zone will be decided by the worker value of the workers sent to the zone hub of that particular zone. The Earth is the zone hub for zone 1, and Jupiter is the zone hub for zone 2. The player with the most presence in a zone at the end of the game will get points equal to the worker value of this zone hub. In games of three or more players, the player in second place gets half this amount rounded up to the nearest whole number. So for example, at the end of the game, there are two lobbyists, an engineer and an algorithm on the Jupiter Zone 2 hub. The worker value is five. This means that the player with the most presence in Zone 2 will get five influence points. And in games of three or more, the second place player will gain three influence points. So let's take a look at the actions which involve removing a worker. Funding the megastructure. To take this action, place an engineer onto the hub of your choice. Then, collect a megastructure funding token from the general supply. Next up is the UFSS Peacekeeping Force action. You can conscript your workers to join the United Federation of the Solar System Peacekeeping Force. This will earn you military tokens. To take this action, remove a general worker, pilot or algorithm from this space during the action phase. Place them onto the hub of your choice. Once you've done this, collect a military token from the general supply. The last worker removal action is voting. Placing a lobbyist here during the assign workers phase allows you to take the vote action. And to do this, remove the lobbyist token in the action phase and place them onto the hub card of your choice. Then you take one of these voting tokens and using the whiteboard pen, secretly put a cross next to the symbol of your chosen political party. Place the completed vote into the ballot box without being seen by your opponents. Each of these tokens is worth one vote for that political party, and the party with the most votes at the end of the game wins the election, and this will also have a big impact on how the game is scored. The political party voted into power at the end of each game will affect the scoring of one element of the game. If the United Federalists are elected, then influence points gained from megastructure tokens are doubled. If Brave New Dawn wins, then influence points gained from building bases is doubled. And if the Workers' Union Party wins, then points gained from military tokens are doubled. For example, at the end of a game where the Brave New Dawn Party has won the election, the base we looked at earlier, which would be worth 7 influence points, is now worth 14. Now on to the last category of actions that you can take in the action phase, the hiring actions. Hiring actions each allow you to gain new workers to be drawn in future rounds. Many of these actions have a double benefit of also providing you with a hiring bonus. You take newly acquired workers from their corresponding hiring cards and place them onto your city leave card for use in future rounds. So what workers can you hire? To hire a lobbyist, you need to remove a pilot and a general worker from these two spaces on your player board during the action phase. This pilot and general worker go onto your city leave card. You then take a lobbyist from the Atkins and Ventroic LLP card and also place it onto your city leave card. The hiring bonus for a lobbyist is that you get to remove an outpost from your available worker section and immediately assign it to a location in the solar system. This also has the added benefit that you can, for the remainder of this game, draw an extra worker from your bag each round during the draw phase. To hire a general worker, you need to remove an engineer and a lobbyist from this section of your player board during the action phase. Once you've done this, take a general worker from the Yurushi Employment Centre card and place it onto your city leave card. After taking a general worker, you can also immediately take advantage of the hiring bonus, which is to take a trade action. To hire an engineer, you need to remove a general worker, pilot and a lobbyist from these three spaces on your player board during the action phase. You then take an engineer from the Treffenfitz Engineering Co card and place it onto your city leave card. The hiring bonus for an engineer is to take the outpost action. To hire a pilot, you need to remove a general worker, engineer and a lobbyist from these three spaces on your player board during the action phase. 
You then take a pilot token from the Nakamura Flight Academy card and place it onto your city leave card. The hiring bonus for a pilot is to take the move action. To hire an algorithm, you need to remove a pilot, an engineer and a general worker from these three spaces on your player board during the action phase. You then take an algorithm from the Shepard AI Systems Inc card and place it onto your city leave card. As a quick reminder, algorithms are wild and can be placed onto any action space. And there is no hiring bonus when you hire an algorithm. When the Shepard AI card is empty of algorithm workers, the card is flipped and any player performing this action from now on in this game will instead be permitted to move a worker from one hub to another hub instead. The action phase ends when all players have taken all the actions they wish to take. The first player token is then passed one space clockwise and the next round begins with another draw phase. Now, there are two triggers for the end of the game. The first is when any player builds their last outpost token. And the second is if any three or more of the five employment cards are completely empty of workers. When either of these triggers occur, players finish the action phase of the current round and then instead of moving back to the draw phase, play moves onto the election phase, where players will find out which party has the most votes. The first player token is not passed on at the end of the last action phase. So what happens when we reach the election phase? Before scoring the game, you must establish which party won the election. This will have an important effect for how the game is scored. So empty the ballot box and add up the votes for each party. When this is complete, the party with the highest number of votes is elected and you move the election token to that card with the UFSS logo face up. In the case of a tie, the party that is currently in power remains in power, even if they weren't one of the tied parties. Let's now look at end game scoring. The game is won by the player with the most influence points. Players score their game by using the first score sheet on page 43 of the magazine. Make sure to also note down the winner of the game, as well as which party won the election into the relevant boxes. Players can score points in many ways. Credits. Score one influence point for every two credits you have left over at the end of the game. Mining resource tokens. These tokens are worth two influence points each at the end of the game. Bases. Score each base built by players. Bases are worth influence points equal to the worker value of the workers on the Hensler hub plus the zone number they are in. For example, this base is built in zone 2 and the worker value of the Hensler hub is 4, so that base is worth 6 influence points. Remember, if, if Brave New Dawn won in the election phase, these points will be doubled and therefore that base will be worth 12 points. Megastructure funding tokens. Each megastructure funding token you possess is worth influence points, equal to the value of the workers on the UFSS hub. For example, this player has two megastructure funding tokens and the worker value of the workers on the UFSS hub is 7. So she gains 14 influence points for these two tokens. And remember, these points would be doubled if the United Federalists won in the election phase. Military tokens. Each military token you possess is worth influence points equal to half the worker value of the workers on the UFSS Peacekeeping Force hub, and that's rounded down. For example, this player has two military tokens, and the worker value of the workers on the military hub is seven. So she gains six influence points for these tokens. If the workers' union party wins the election, then these points will be doubled. Presents. At the end of the game, players will score influence points for their presence in each zone. If you have the most presence in a zone, then you will gain influence points equal to the worker value of the workers on that zone's hub. In games of three or more players, the player in second place gets half this amount, rounded up to the nearest whole number. You measure presence as follows, making sure that at the end of the game, each zone is looked at individually. Each of your outposts in that zone counts as one presence. Each of your bases in that zone counts as two presence. And in that zone, your starting ship is worth two presence. If you lease other ships in future games, they may have a different presence value. And that will be listed on that corresponding ship card. Calculate the presence of each player in each zone. 
In the case of ties, all tied players gain the full points. Finally, the player or players who have the most presence in Zone 1, which contains the Megastructure Location token, also gain an additional 5 influence points. For example, at the end of a game, the worker value on Zone 1's hub, Earth, is 7, and the Megastructure Location token is in Zone 1. Therefore, the Teal player has 5 outposts and 1 base in Zone 1, and so their presence is 7. The orange player has three outposts, three bases, and a ship in zone one, and so their presence is 11. The yellow player has five outposts and three bases in zone one, and so their presence is also 11. Player colours orange and yellow both have an equal amount of presence in zone one, and so they receive 12 influence points each. Seven for the worker value of the workers on the UFSS zone one hub, and an extra five, as Zone 1 was the megastructure location for this game. As this is a three-player game, the teal player gains half the amount, so six influence points. Zone 2 would then be scored based on the presence players have in that zone, and the worker value of the workers on the Zone 2 hub, Jupiter. In the event of a tie for influence points, then, of the tied players, the player with the most presence in Zone 1 is declared the winner. If there is still a tie, then of the tied players, the player who is closest to next receiving the first player token is the winner. Congratulations, that's everything you need to play game one of Solar 175. This is also the vast majority of the rules for the whole campaign. After you have completed your first game, you should watch the next video in this series to learn about how the campaign will progress from here. And don't forget, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and we'll answer them as soon as possible. Bye!